Okay, well, we're back from the simulator, having tested this plane and seeing that it flew really well. There's some tweaks we need to do, and of course I need to work on making these body parts, like the engine pylons and the bottom part of the fuselage. And I also remember from the flight that I didn't have the front wheel set to steer. So I'm going to go through those things real quick, and nose wheel steering probably have 30 degrees for low speed, no, I'll say 45 degrees for low speed steering. This would be a place where I would normally uh, consult the resources that I've done research on in order to punch in the correct numbers here, but just for the time being, I'll, I'm just interested in showing you where to find this data. Uh, same thing for miscellaneous bodies. If I want to create the undercarriage where the wings are attached, I will go here and the same rules apply as what I did for the fuselage modeling. You can um, use very much the same technique that I used earlier to create the, the fuselage, but just to give you an idea of uh, what happens when uh, we start modeling that, that body. Uh, it shows up inside the fuselage here. Uh, you can always hit spacebar to get a wireframe view, and then you use the control points to create the shape that you're looking for. And you can load, up, load in an, an image of the uh, plane, as a background image and model it, side fuse for example, and provided you have the correct zoom setting, you can move these uh, points around to shape this body part the way you would want it to be. I'm not going to go, go through that right now because that's very repetitive stuff, so I trust you can figure that out yourself. If not, consult the second tutorial in this series on how we did the body. And the next thing we want to work on, the engine pylons, you see, engine pylons right here. And basically, they work similarly to the way wings work. You select this, and then you give it a, a wingspan. You give it a root cord and a tip cord. And um, you start seeing it show up there right beside the engine. It needs to be wider. Uh, not quite that wide. You need to pull it in a little bit more. Not quite that much. And... You work the dimensions until it uh, is exactly what you want it to be. So we've got a rough pylon there. We can actually mirror it on the other side. And uh, after cutting away some of the more boring parts of this video, what I can show for is I've just finished doing this joint here for the high T assembly right there. I've also finished doing the uh, bottom, I guess this is the baggage compartment or the fuel tank or whatever you want to assign that to. And I've also finished doing the dihedral and all the settings for the engine pylons. I also tweaked the engines to look better. They're more accurate now, so if I look from the front, I actually have that characteristic square look of these engines. Okay, I'd like to move on to the panels now. That's what this tutorial is supposed to be about. And here we have the airliner background. And I've downloaded a whole bunch of pictures here of the cockpit what we're going to do is we're going to sort of split the cockpit right down here. We're not going to worry about what the co-pilot sees. So this is, for example, the uh, gear retraction lever. And then we have to figure out exactly which monitors are on here. This is the engine monitor. This is a multifunction display. And here we have the artificial horizon. And there's multiple little windows that are probably all multifunction displays. So we'll have to go through and from these pictures just enter in all the knobs and all the different instruments for this cockpit. Well, it doesn't look like I have too much time left to go into the creation of this cockpit in this particular video tutorial. So I'm just going to uh, stop it here and continue on in the next tutorial. I'm going to walk you through uh, making one of these panels here because that's all I had time for. It actually takes a pretty long time to assemble all these panels by hand. The thing that I figure is important though is that you see the process and see the whole uh, how it's done from scratch. Of course you can import panels that other people have made but uh, that's not the process. I, I really want to focus on fostering the creative process, the creative part of doing these things. So I hope you find this helpful in your own quest to make good planes. Okay so I hope to see you for the next tutorial.